All right, friends, today we're gonna to be unboxing the 24 inch teleprompter from Prompter People. Be seen, heard, and better understood through virtual gatherings. Elevate your message with corporate streams. So this is the box here. Um, as you can probably tell, it's already opened. I've been using this prompter on different sets for the last three or four months now. I've been meaning to do an unboxing, but uh, with everything going on, I just haven't gotten the time until now. So let's dig in and look at what comes in the box. I do want to point out because I've already opened this box, the packing is going to be a little bit different than what you would see right in your typical set because I've already pulled out a few things and reorganized a few things. So it's not really about how it was packed. It's really about what came in the box, right? And what comes with your prompter. Without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull out all of this bubble wrap. Obviously this is good for protection, but we won't need it for this. And the first thing I'm gonna point out is this camera sled and riser. This sled goes on the back of the teleprompter and then this riser allows your camera to be risen up, right, rised up. You can have the lower stage or the upper stage depending on your needs. So that's gonna be up to you and your camera system. Next thing is you have this accessory bag. So in this bag, you'll have remotes, uh, a VGA cable, composite cable, that kind of stuff. For now, we're also gonna set this out. So you'll have a power cable. This is a 12 volt, five amp power cable that came to power the monitor if you ordered a prompter with the monitor. I've used some cable ties to tidy up this cable. Those do not come with the teleprompter. Time to bust out the big boy. All right, folks, so now we have the 24 inch prompter in front of me here. As you can probably see, there is some foam between the monitor itself and the glass reflector that's there. So that actually came from the bottom of the box. And so what I did is I cut up that so it would fit well in the section. So I'm also gonna show you on the back side of the prompter, we have our two primary screws, which will loosen up, that will allow us to tilt up the reflector itself. So to do that, we'll basically pull out the pin, rotate it, and basically keep rotating until we've loosened up these screws. So righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? So we'll do that. And uh, don't forget that these can slide depending on which way they're facing because obviously they can't rotate all the way around. So once we've loosened this up, we can go ahead and raise up the glass and it actually will slide into a groove. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to the side here so you can see me a little bit better. Yeah, so like I talked about, there are the two foam pieces right here. There is a screen protector, which will help cover the screen, keep it safe. And this is the prompter itself now. So I did notice that the 24 inch is much wider than the 19 inch and the height was about the same for the angle of reflection. So it has a nice metal border all the way around the edge of the screen itself. And I'll also point out that the diagonal 24 inch is how it's measured. So looking at the back side of the prompter, you can see that it does have an ABS plastic, right? This cover that helps cover the back side of the glass where it's reflected. And then you do have this fabric which allows you to put your camera inside. Let's go ahead and set the foam and the cover to the side. I'm gonna slide this over and we'll go ahead and mount this on the back side. So to do that, just like all the other teleprompters from Prompter People, you have the two pins which basically slide in and this one twists into the top. So this pin allows you to lift and twist just like the two side ones, but I would suggest instead of trying to put this on while your prompter is at the angle, go ahead and set your prompter back down and then attach your sled. That way you can twist that a lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and twist this back in. There we go, that should save you a little bit of time. Now we're gonna raise back up to the groove and then tighten down our glass to make sure nothing moves. So let's do that. All right, so the cool thing about this back plate is um, there is arrows that shows you lock and unlock. So you could basically push it towards the unlock or push it towards the lock, right, to tighten it up. This plate also, as you tighten it down, will stop it from sliding forward and back. So if you need to slide it forward or back, you wanna loosen it just a little bit, then you can slide this plate to where you need it to go. And then you could basically push it back forward to the lock position. And now this plate is gonna be secure. So that's gonna be really helpful because when you attach your camera, you may want to slide this plate all the way back. That way you can set the camera in, get it all screwed in, get the hood in place, and then slide the camera forward towards the glass once you have it all set up. So then we have power here, right? So we can plug in the monitor underneath on the, on the bottom side here. So why don't we go ahead and flip this one over? That way we can take a look at the ports and what we have set up on the back side. So this is what the underside of the teleprompter looks like. This thread allows you to slide the monitor forward and back. In my experience, 90% of the time, I had the monitor slid all the way towards the back. Um, that way the balancing could work a little better. And then you do have this mounting plate. So this is what slides forward and back as well. You'll wanna try to ballpark this 
plate into the right spot. You can use these two screws to go ahead and tighten that to lock the sliding plate into place. I did notice that you need quite a thick flathead screwdriver to get to both sides of these. And that to me is a little bit dangerous. So uh, I would encourage you to try to find something that is pretty fat. That way you don't strip these out. And it's kind of funny that they're not a standard size. Like I'm even slipping now and this is a quite a large screwdriver. So that's something that could probably be improved upon. So, so you have a quarter, three eighths, and then another quarter inch thread on the bottom of this. These are for a tripod plate. So you would screw your tripod plate into the bottom there and the sled goes on the other side too. For this particular monitor, this is the Hybrite monitor and it comes with SDI in and out. It has two HDMI ins and then there is one HDMI pass through. It has some other cable connections, which I would probably suggest you don't use like the composite in or the VGA because those are both analog systems and the quality is gonna be a lot less if you use those. So like most of the other prompters in the prompter people lineup, the screen does come with built-in speakers that are set to 50%. So one of the first things I did is I grabbed the remote and I turned down the speaker volume. In this goodie bag, you have a VGA cable, which I don't have with me. You have a television remote for the monitor. You have composite video cables, which is something I'm also not gonna be using. Inside this bag, you have a microfiber cloth for keeping your screen clean, the Prompter People warranty card, so you can scan that QR code and check out their warranty program, their manual and brochure card, also with QR codes, and then finally, a USB Prompter People flash drive, which has FlipQ on it for the teleprompter software. So the buttons for this are on the top side, not the back side. That was something I noticed in the 19-inch trapezoidal. The buttons were actually on the back instead of the top here. That's okay, um, either one works for me. And I do wanna point out that there are several little screws along the way in different parts of this teleprompter. So if you're like me and you're handy, I would encourage you to grab some Loctite, pull out those threads and then put some Loctite in them. That way um, nothing moves on you and it, it all stays tight together. So there you have it folks. This is a beast of a teleprompter. It is the largest through the lens prompter that I've seen and I'm super excited to use it in corporate environments, especially with folks who can't see as well. So. so there is one good rule of thumb about teleprompters and the inch, the size of the screen, right? So this is 24 inches, right? So the recommended viewing distance is up to 24 feet. I would say a good rule of thumb is to divide that in half, right? So it's 12 to 24 feet, 12 being the minimum, because the closer you are to this prompter, the more your eyes are gonna shift from right to left as you are reading the text on the screen. That's gonna do it for this unboxing. If you'd like to see more from Corporate Streams, visit our YouTube channel, check us out at corporatestreams.com, and thank you for watching.